Hello, and thanks for checking out this quick tutorial I put together on a workflow that I just recently learned about in which you can export 3D data information during an animation export from Cinema 4D and later use that same data to drive instances of one of my favorite After Effects uh, plugins, Yanobox Nodes. Let's jump into Cinema 4D and I'll show you how it works on a simple animation setup, and then we'll try something a little more complex right after that. So here is our simple animation setup. It is indeed very simple. We have a platonic right in the middle of the scene. If I single click on that, you can see that all the coordinates are zeroed out. And then I also have a null with a camera inside. If I single click the null, two keyframes, uh, one is at zero, the other at 90. If I click play, you'll see that all that those keyframes do is drive the camera around the platonic 360 degrees. Pretty simple. Okay, the first thing we want to do to start getting things into After Effects is export our key animation element, the platonic in this case, export that out as an OBJ. So file, export, wavefront OBJ, and navigate into your folder structure where you want that to live. Uh, just prior to recording, I already exported platonic OBJ, uh, but so you'll name here and click save. I'm going to cancel out since I've already done that. Next thing we're going to do is jump into our render settings. We're going to render out a standard 1920 by 1080 HD export, 30 frames a second, and all frames under frame range. Then click on save. Uh, make sure you're saving it to a location where you can find it again later. I'm exporting a QuickTime movie here. Uh, you can export whatever format you're most comfortable working with. And then toggle down compositing project file. Make sure under target application that it is set to After Effects. There are a couple of options here. Uh, I believe After Effects may be the default, not 100% sure on that. Regardless, make sure to set it to After Effects now. Then click Include 3D Data. Next thing we're going to do is click Save Project File. And what that's going to do is save out what is called an AEC file, an After Effects composition file. Navigate once again to where you want that to live, and you can find it easily later on. I saved it as a platonic AEC just prior to recording, so again, you'll name it here and save. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. Last thing we want to do is our standard QuickTime export and wait for that to render out. So let's get that started, and away it goes. All right, so our render is wrapped up. Let's jump on over to After Effects, and we're gonna to try to bring in that AEC file that we just saved out. So under the project window, double click and go find that file within your folder structure. Mine was Platonic AEC. I'm gonna double click that, and After Effects has created a folder. If we toggle down that folder, there is our QuickTime that we just exported out, and it has also created a comp. So I double click on the comp and there is our QuickTime once again. And it has also created an After Effects camera using the 3D data that we saved out of Cinema 4D. So now it's time to composite nodes onto our scene here. And as we build it out, I'm just gonna quickly turn off the After Effects camera for a moment. We'll turn that back on in just a second. Uh, so new, solid, we'll name that nodes for housekeeping. And then After Effects presets, go find your Yano box folder and nodes three, drop that onto the solid and boom, there it is. So we now have an instance of nodes composited on top of our QuickTime. Now if we turn our camera back on, you're gonna see something a little bit odd happen. It seems to disappear. Well, it's not actually gone, but if you remember in Cinema 4D, our uh, scene was zeroed out on all coordinates. So if we mirror that within nodes, it should pop back in. So transform 960 by 540, zero both of those out, and we'll see it back in our scene. If I click play on my timeline, you can see that Nodes is being driven by that 3D data camera information that we exported from Cinema and was brought into After Effects. Now let's see if we can go just a little bit further with this and I'll show you something kind of cool. Rather than having nodes be formed by this circle, why don't we have it be formed by that OBJ that we exported from our platonic earlier on in Cinema 4D. So under Form, Not Circle, we want Import OBJ and navigate to find that. Mine was platonic OBJ. There it is. Now we want to click Off Nodes and let it be formed by Lines. Jump down to Connections, and rather than Serial, let's go to Triangulation. Our scale is a little bit off. 
and let's bring it down a bit. I'm going to leave it just slightly larger for illustration purposes here so it's a little easier to see. And now back down to connections. If you click hidden lines and then your uh, nodes layer here within After Effects, change the transfer mode to screen and watch what happens when I hit play in the timeline. Pretty cool. All right, so now that we have the basic steps of the workflow down, I thought I would try to apply those same simple steps to a slightly more elaborate animation to illustrate just how you can leverage, in my opinion, one of the true strengths of nodes, and that's adding complexity to a scene quickly and fairly easily. I jumped online looking for an interesting looking landscape and found the Hawaiian island of Kauai, so I grabbed a screenshot uh, of that. I also grabbed a screenshot of the height map of that same island and uh, lined those two up the best that I could in Photoshop, cleaned up both of those layers a little bit, and then saved out each layer as a JPEG. Jumping back into Cinema 4D, I used those JPEGs to create a texture and a height map onto a plane to create sort of this cool looking 3D map element. I also threw in a ground plane with some reflectivity and a few lights to finish it off. The animation uh, in this scene is fairly similar to the one that we did on the platonic. I've got a null with a camera inside, and if I single click the null, you can see once again, I have just two keyframes, one at uh, zero, the other at 180. This animation is a little bit longer than the other. And if I click play once again, all those keyframes do is drive my camera 360 degrees around my map element. Okay, the only way that this will differ slightly from the platonic animation is that we have multiple elements within this scene where there was only the one platonic in the other. So we need to isolate the map element in order to export it as an OBJ. An easy way to do that, here is my plane with my live displacement. I didn't want to uh, sort of lock that in in case I wanted to make changes to the displacement in the future, so I just turned off that layer and then right click and current state to object. And what that did was create an additional object with my displacement locked in. And if I single click that, I can go to Edit, Copy, File, New, and then Edit, Paste. And there is uh, my isolated element for us to save out as an OBJ. All right, jump back over to our map animation and dive into render settings to make sure that everything is set up the way that we need it to be. 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second, all frames. And under save, uh, make sure our file path is leading to where we want it to be. QuickTime Movie is the format and compositing project file. Our target application is still set up to After Effects. Click on include 3D data and let's save that file again. Now time for the animation render and to go get a cup of coffee. So once our animation is completed, a rendering out of Cinema 4D, we'll jump back into After Effects and bring in that map AEC file that was uh, created earlier. Go find that file. Here's the folder it created, toggle that down. Here's our QuickTime export from Cinema and the comp that has been created. Double click the comp and here is our After Effects camera and our QuickTime once again. We don't need these lights, so let's get rid of those. And if I click play in the timeline, you can see that there is our animation from cinema. All right, let's see if we can start to bring this animation to life just a little bit by experimenting with some layers of nodes. So new, solid, we'll call this one nodes one. Apply the nodes three effect drop it in and zero out our transform to bring it into the center of our scene. There we go. Let's change the default circle to that map OBJ that we created earlier. Import OBJ, navigate to where we saved it. There, double click it. And there it is. The form is a little bit small. Let's scale that up and see if we can get it to sort of float over our map element. Bring it up just a little bit, and there. And rather than lines this time, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as nodes and just experiment with the nodes uh, type and size. Under type, let's try soft shape, and then size quite a bit smaller, I think, maybe two. That's starting to look pretty cool already. Rather than uniform, let's give random a shot. 
under rendering, uh, depth effect, uh, turn on fog, and that adds just a little bit of depth to our element. And now I'm going to add a color adjustment layer. New adjustment layer. And I'm going to apply an effect, uh, a, a free effect actually, from the talented and generous Andrew Kramer over at Video Copilot. Uh, it's called Color Vibrance. And if we drop that in, it's already pretty cool just with the defaults. Maybe lighten the color slightly for this. And now let's animate the completion of this element over the top of the map. Go back to our Nodes 1 layer. Here is the master completion. This could also be done with the nodes completion, but we'll just use master here. So we'll have it effecting on about one second into our scene. I'm going to set a keyframe for my master completion, and then let's call it about 20 frames in. Uh, hit another keyframe and zero out my percentage at my first keyframe and play that through. Pretty cool. Okay, let's keep going. Let's apply another instance of nodes. This one will be nodes two. And in this case, let's try one of the presets that come pre-installed with nodes. Let's pull that underneath our adjustment layer. And new with nodes 3 is the presets browser, one of my favorite new features. Click that and you can see all of the presets in a new window here. And it makes it so much easier to sort of browse through and uh, look for presets that may be useful to your project. In this case, I think I'm going to use one of the existing HUD elements. Let's try this one here, this dial. These presets are really great to work with and they're sort of infinitely customizable. And what's nice is that if you find one that's close to what you need for your project, it gets you halfway there and then you can just tweak it to uh, whatever the needs of your project are. So click on that, zero out your transform. There, zero and zero. And it looks like our rotation is off just a little bit. I believe it is Y. Nope, it's X, rotation 90 degrees. There we go. And we'll experiment a little bit on the Y axis to bring that up just a little bit, uh, bring it above our map and see how that's looking. And now about halfway through the original animation on nodes one, let's start an animation on our nodes two layer. So again, we'll set a keyframe for our master completion and about 20 frames later, we'll set another keyframe. Go back to our first keyframe, set that to zero on our percentage. Now let's click on the timeline to see how we are looking. Pretty interesting, I think. Hopefully you can see how with just a little more time and tweaking, you could potentially add some real complexity and depth to almost any motion design project using the Nodes plugin. Although this is sort of a fake project just for the sake of this tutorial, with just a grand total of four keyframes and surprisingly little time and effort, I created what could potentially be the start of a pretty cool looking piece. If you're new to nodes, I encourage you to jump in by exploring and customizing the presets. Uh, there are a lot of new presets with the nodes three release and some old uh, favorites from the previous versions as well. They are very powerful design elements and can save you a lot of time with their procedural animations. If this is your first time hearing about the Yanobox Nodes plugin, head over to yanobox.com and there's a lot of good information there to be found including a fully functional free trial version you can try before buying.